back to the casual side of baseball YouTube. My name is Kenny, and today I'm talking about every MLB team. Now, I used to do something like this on my NBA channels where I dedicated a certain amount of time to talk about every organization in one way or another, and today we're doing that for the MLB. There's going to be a 30-second timer. No second more will be spent on an organization because once my timer goes off, I am editing whatever I have to say out. It's cutthroat, it's over. For a few reasons, it's always just fun to just add weird things to videos. And I, can, I don't want this video to be 30 minutes long, honestly. It's just not good for the algorithm. So like I said, I'm a casual baseball fan, so don't expect me to come in here and give you advanced statistics or hot takes or yada yada. Honestly, some of the organizations I'm gonna talk about, I have not watched at all since the trade that line, or even before then. So I gotta somehow find a way to talk about that. I'm not saying what I'm talking about today is necessarily about this season either. Just when I hear this team name, whatever the heck is on my mind is what I'm saying and I got 30 seconds to say it. Cool? Cool, let's get into it. Oreo, starting now. It's kinda crazy how superstitious sports are, but specifically baseball, um, they have not won a game since I guess a cat ran onto the field. I can tell you on a single amount of hands how many Baltimore Orioles games I've watched. I'm waiting for Adley Rushman to, Rushman? That's his name? To get called up because I honestly think, what the heck is he, wait, what are they waiting for? You lost almost 20 games in a row. Maybe it is at 20 at this point. What are you waiting for? Just bring up the number one prospect, please. I'm so happy to see Chris Sale back. Um, because Chris Sales is just one of, one of my favorite pitchers of all time because he spent time here in the, with the White Sox. And I just felt like those last couple of years of him on the White Sox, we were just wasting him. And to have him go to Boston, of course, um, uh, be successful in Boston is dope. And a man ain't pitched in like two years and he finally came back and he looks so solid. We got the kid in the Little League World Series with the same kind of wind up as him. It's kind of dangerous. But the kid was dominating. I think he threw a no-hitter plus. Chris Sale, thank you for your service to Chicago. Thank you. For Yankees are super hot. Uh, 10 games in a row, they just beat on the Braves, and that was a game I actually watched because it was two hottest teams in baseball going head-to-head, -head, and it was cool. I was surprised, and this is the casual side of me because I don't really understand why the young kid, um, uh, Lu Luis Hill, Gill, um, had three three perfect outings, basically, and they sent them back to the minors. I know the roster does expand in like a week or so or however long, but it's weird to see him get sent down. You got Andrew Henney, Heaney, who just be giving up a 1,000 hits per. I made a tweet about the Rays attendance thing because I think a game against the Orioles, Orioles about a week ago, they had like 5,000 people in attendance, which is mind-blowing to me because of how great of an organization or how great of a team it is. Now, people explain that the where the, the, the actual arena is sucks and the actual arena does suck itself, but I just figured that one, being one of the best teams in baseball, um, just having recent success, they would still pack out the house no matter how difficult it is to get to the spot or how bad the stadium is because it's just overall good basketball baseball oh my god that's what injuries the blue jays make no sense to me to to have all of those amazing bats in their lineup to have the run difficulty that they do and to not be in the playoffs right now is so so very wild they just be my white socks a shout out to them i just hate that, that we lost the game but whatever um it's just this is one of the reasons why I do like baseball and I'm happy I got back into it this year because there's so many things that I just still don't understand. Like, why the heck aren't the Blue Jays, like, dominating the league with as many great players as they have and, and just great overall offense? How I love watching the White Sox every single night. I, I can say that. But I'm a little bit afraid. I think at this point we are 31 and 32 against teams over 500. And it just seems like whenever we go against a very good team, we, we like crumble. Um, and I know we're dealing with a lot of injuries. We still don't got Yasmani Grandal. Tim Anderson's out right now. Like we have zero, literal zero games played with our actual full complete healthy lineup. But I'm a little bit afraid that we might just be beating up on the bad division. I hope that ain't the truth and we can really be competitive and real be, really be contenders. But I, I wish that I would have invested in Tristan McKenzie a little bit earlier. Obviously, he had the near-perfect game, which I hate, and then his next outing, he was amazing as well. I should have just, just went with my instinct. My instinct said, hey, we got a brother that's young and he's pitching. I know he wasn't great for a lot of the season. I should have just invested right there, just be jumped on the bandwagon because it's, it's I want to root for people like him, honestly, and he's a good Twitter account to follow, but when I try to get his cards, they're hella expensive now because he just fuzzy made me fall in love with a kill Badu. I just, oh my God, I hate that. Like, okay, it's Tristan McKenzie, um, Akil Badu. These are two people in my division. I shouldn't be rooting for people in my division. But the Tigers got something going on with that little youth movement, man. I just feel like in a few years, they're going to be really, really good. And shout out to, to Miguel Cabrera for hitting 500, ridiculous 500 home runs. They got a nice movement over there in Detroit. And Akil Badu just, oh my God. First pitch he ever sees in the, in the majors is a home run? 
And some of the people I follow on Twitter are one of the reasons why I'm still kind of in touch because I can go a long time without watching a certain organization, especially some of the organizations in this division because the division is pretty much won by the White Sox. But uh, Salvador Perez has been playing his butt off. And I forget who exactly tweeted it, talking about how great he has been, how many home runs he said in comparison to his previous years in his career. And he's still doing that at an at a older age. It's kind of crazy how some of the better catchers in the league are so old. When you think about the position they play, playing like the... What do I say about the Twins? I got 30 seconds to talk about the Twins. Um, before the season started, I remember reading a bunch of articles about like people predicting records and predicting what the playoffs are going to look like. And I ain't forgot that a lot of people picked the Twins to win our division. I don't know what happened to the, I know that Byron Buxton had an amazing first month. He got the player of the month card in MLB The Show, and then he got injured and he ain't really been seen, even though I think he's in the minors right now and he just hit a home run, yada, yada, yada. Um, I don't know what really happened to the Twins, man. Then they sold off some of their team. I, Twins fans, please. I wish that the Astros didn't cheat however many years ago. Because they have so many players in their team that I want to root for, but I can't stand a cheater in any circumstance. Um, like, you can't... Jose Altuve could be the king of short kings in the world of baseball, but I can't help but to think about the trash can whenever he's doing some stuff. I'm still amazed when he's 5'6 and he's jumping up and making catches, or he's 5'6 and he's got the big old bat and he's hitting into left field. I can still be amazed at it, but it's hard for me to root for it. It's hard for me to also understand the magnitude of Otani's season. Um, for it being my first year back on, I understand what, what Otani is doing is amazing. Um, we haven't seen a two-way player be this good since Babe Ruth, but even then, I can't really put that into perspective because I haven't been watching for the past decade or so. Like, I think it was Fuzzy, a lot of shout-outs to Fuzzy, where he was just saying this might be the greatest season of all time. And I'm like, really? You know what I'm saying? It's hard for me to put that into perspective because I don't know what the last 10 years even looked like. In, a in the past two weeks, I've watched Moneyball three times. I can't get enough of it. And I've watched it when it first came out, but for some reason, since I'm back into baseball, I can't help it. The Oakland Athletics, it sucks that they might have to move, first of all. Such a legendary coliseum of a, of a, a stadium. And I was just watching them play against the Mariners. Actually, it's still going on as I'm watching this, and they're up 3-2 in the bottom of the eighth. Um, Matt Olsen's swing is just so beautiful to me. I know it's ugly, but like in the most... He just hits the ball so hard. Every time he swings the bat, I'm ex just expecting it to go to deep right field. For In both conferences, there is a team that is relatively solid that I have not watched or kept up with. And this conference, or in this league, is it conference or is it in this, in the American League, it is the Seattle Mariners. I can't tell you much about the Seattle Mariners at all. I know that um, J.P. Crawford is playing solid for a percentage of the season. I don't know if he still is. But the team right now is, what, three and a half games out of a wild card spot. And I don't know, they got a negative point differential. And they're somehow winning. I don't understand what's going on in Seattle. My apologies. I know they brought up Jared Kelly. Um, even before the season started. Or, or like some teams I gave a chance very early on and then when they started to be bad or I wasn't having fun, I stopped watching them. The Mariners are a team, I'm not the Mariners, the Rangers are a team that I just did not watch from the very beginning. I, can, I don't have a single um, Rangers like memory. They got the one guy in the minors that has a YouTube channel with his wife. He got traded in the Joey Gallo trade, so that's kind of fun. But other than that, I don't know what the heck is going on in their organization at all. At all. I know they got Garcia, who's... The Braves are hot. I mean, they just lost to the Yankees. Um, but before that, they were they were super, super hot. And they're taking over their division, which is crazy when you really think about, of course, the major injury um, that happened. I still can't get over that, man, because cause Acuna is definitely is one of those guys that uh, I think everybody loves to watch. He's just such a fun dude. I wish I would have been around a little bit earlier in his career, I guess. Because it's just he's just one of those dudes that I would have liked to invest in, similar to what I said about McKen McKenzie or similar to some of the other elite players in the league. Like, if I would have saw him... Him in his first couple at bats. I, Jazz Chisholm is one of my favorite players in MLB. He is one of the younger players that I was able to invest in when it comes to sports cards. I will make a sports card video at some point, um, but I stopped buying cards over the past week or so because I, I think I was just going too crazy. Um, Jazz Chisholm, it was again somebody on Twitter tweeted a video of him hitting a home run, and the bat speed was just ridiculous. It, it's like I still can't compute how fast his bat his bat is, especially when I go to the to the batting cages. And I try to like do a side by side comparison. I know he's been playing bad to the Mets. At one point earlier in the season, they were one of my favorite teams to watch. Um, and I will be honest with you, a lot of the games that I did watch was um was when Degrom was pitching. Um, but still, they were still a fun team to watch. And and just recently, they had this terrible, terrible streak, and I just can't watch it anymore. I'm sorry, Mets fans. I can't watch it anymore. I'm off the bandwagon. Yep. 
I'm off I'm off the bandwagon. I was actually contemplating making it my NL team for a little bit. Now, the Phillies had went on this amazing run. Bryce Harper was killing it, and he had going up the, the ranks when it comes to MVP in the NL. Um, and now, at this point, they, they kind of slumped a little bit, but they have the easiest schedule left in the MLB by far. And as I'm recording this, they are five games out of the wild card with the easiest record left in baseball. But they did just get swept by the Diamondbacks last week. So I don't... I tried to watch the national games the other day. Um, it would have been my first game I watched of theirs since the trade deadline. Before the trade deadline, of course, I loved Juan Soto. Um, I love Josh Harrison. I love Trey Turner as players. And of course... Um, Juan Soto still there, but the other guys got traded. And since that moment, I have not watched the game. And then when I tried to watch it, it was just so many names that I didn't recognize. And I was like, is it even worth learning these players' names? Are these players there for the future or they're just here for the now until they start their read? So the Cubs sold hard at the trade deadline. Javi Baez, um, Rizzo, the whole pitching bullpen. And they, they sold everything. And this is going to be my first time being a part of MLB free agency. And I wonder with a market like Chicago, specifically with the Cubs, because it's the bigger market of Chicago and Chicago, right? How long it takes for them to rebuild, at least have a, a, a fun team for the Cubs fans to have. Because right now they got a few players that all Cubs fans are going to love, but they don't have a anything. Now, this is the other team I was talking about, you know, as a good team that I have not watched enough of. The... Cincinnati Reds have the wild card spot in the NL, and I don't remember watching a, at least a full game of them. Like, I've watched some highlights, of course, when Joey Votto was on that super hot streak, um, when Castellanos is hitting shots and Jesse Winker is hitting shots. But overall, I have not been up to the Seattle Reds. I need to tune in because of right now, um, they have a one-game lead over. For the Brewers to be so close to me and, like, as far as distance, for me not to have been to their arena just yet it's kind of crazy i need to stop sleeping and and just go check it out i mean their pitching staff is ridiculous they got some good bats they got some fun names they got what's his name avicio garcia who used to play here in chicago i don't know why i haven't taken that one hour drive to go to a milwaukee brewers game you know what i'm looking up their schedule right now i'm going to a brewers game sometime this month and i'm gonna have a lot of fun while being there what what's going on with the pot i don't know bro i just did a video a couple days ago and MLB The Show said that was the worst team in the league. So I don't, you think I'm watching and if they're considered the worst team in the league? Uh, they got Key Brian Hayes. Uh, like, I, like I said with um, McKenzie, I always just try to look for people to root for and to have a brother playing the hot corner and playing okay and just being young and just an up-and-coming player. He's a guy I root for in their organization. Uh, I just don't know what else is going on outside of that. I just watched uh, Foolish Baseball's video on Yadier Molina. Which was cool because Yadier Molina is a guy that was around before I stopped watching baseball originally. So to see him still here and still at least be elite on the defensive side of the ball is kind of crazy when you think about it. Again, the catcher position, I just imagine that all catchers' knees are dead after five years. Not Yadier Molina. And then you had, oh my God, who stole the base on him and took literally stole the base because it's such a monumental moment. Because that's how dominant of a, a defensive catcher Yadier Molina had been for the past day. Diamondbacks. Um... We might have to sit in silence for 30 seconds, dog. I don't know. What am I supposed to say about the Diamondbacks? I, uh, um, um, literal, like, legit. Oh, they had the one kid throw a no-hitter, right? The one kid threw a no-hitter in his first game. Was that the backs? I'm pretty sure that was the backs. And that was a wholesome moment because his pops was in the crowd. Um, just, just a crazy great experience for him. I wonder, has he pitched since, since then? And if he did, how did it turn out? I'm guessing not as great. Okay, we're getting to the weeds of teams that I don't watch. Um, I still just can't believe Trevor Story didn't get traded. And I, I was listening to a podcast and they were talking about the fact that Trevor Story did not get traded. And talked about how there might have been fear in the organization because they bu they uh, butchered another trade with the Nolan Arenado trade. Where they got basically nothing back for one of the better players in the league. So they might have been afraid. But even then, I will take... A bad trade over no trade at all and letting the player walk in free agency. That could be baseball, football. Can somebody explain to me what's going on with uh, Cody Ballinger? It's been a full season. He still ain't come around yet. You know, you just think that eventually a former MVP, uh, a World Series, like, I don't know, savior, basically, would eventually come around. But we're, we're, 
how many games into the season are we? A million games into the season. He still ain't come around yet. He had a couple game streak where he was hitting like 260. And I just remember people on Twitter was like, yes, here it is, here it is, here it is. And it hasn't come. Will when it happen? I don't even understand what he's coming back from as far as injury goes. We're talking about the easiest schedule left in baseball. I saw something on Reddit that showcased the Padres schedule. Wow. Um, If the Padres want to make anything happen, they, get have, they got to go through a ton of great teams, bro. I think they still have like two series left against the Giants who are the best team in baseball. I don't even know if I talked about it. The Giants are last. Okay, the best team in baseball according to record. And it's just kind of crazy because it just felt like a team that was going to 100% be in the playoffs. And right now they hold the wild card spot, but with this strength of schedule. And lastly, the Giants. I'm sorry, Giants fans, that you had to go last. Um, it's just kind of crazy that again, this is another team, or I guess the only team, that has a ton of players from my overall like era of baseball that are still playing. Buster Posey, I think Buster Posey just got an extension, right? Like Buster Posey is hitting home runs, he's like 50. Evan Longoria, I think he's injured at the moment, but he's like 50 and he's playing a huge, huge part of things. It's kind of crazy. I know a lot of people didn't expect him to be this good or to be as good. All right, there's a lot of teams that I could have said a lot more about and a lot of teams that I didn't have anything to say about. Um, but that is 30 seconds around every MLB organization. I'm looking through my notes to just make sure I didn't accidentally skip a team. But something tells me I did. And if I did and I forgot your organization, I'm, my bad.